Mark, Happy New Year. First and foremost, it's just great to see you coming back to your very best form. European Masters in the autumn and then the manner of winning the Scottish just before Christmas was sheer class. Yeah, I've been playing well for a few months now, which is, which is nice because I had a, a, a patch for 12 to 18 months where, yeah, I was winning matches, but I wasn't playing fantastic, not really getting to the back end of tournaments and not really that confident either. So uh, working with Chris, that seemed to have turned things around. Performance on the table a lot better, a lot more confident, so uh, a good place to be at the moment. And it looks like you're enjoying it again. There's a little bit of a, if not a swagger, there's a, a notable confidence as you're going around the table during these frames. It, it looks like you're happy again. Yeah, it is. I mean, two things. One, because I'm playing a lot better. And two, because I actually fancy the job now because I'm playing better. Where before, like I said, I wasn't playing well. I was going into matches, not really confident of thinking I can win the tournament because I didn't think my game was there. Where now it's a total opposite. One of the things I, I love about watching you play is this mental strength in contrast to how relaxed and amenable you are off the table and how hard you are when you start playing. How, how much of that is just in someone instinctively and, and how much of that is honed over the years? Have you always had that ability to, to switch mentally at key moments in snooker? I don't think I've always had it. It's something my father tried to install in me when I was playing. Uh, when I was a lot younger, he was saying to me, look, when you go out there, for that time you're on the table, try and give nothing away and try and make it as hard as possible for your opponent. And if they still beat you, fair enough, you hold your hands up and you say, well played, but try not to make it just so easy for them and they don't have to work for it. Obviously, if they beat you, you've got to make it that they work for it and they feel like they've been in a game. So having lost him when I was 16, so young, that's always stayed with me and I think it's continued through my career. I I'm glad you mentioned that because I didn't necessarily want to talk about your dad unless you, unless you were comfortable. That must have been so difficult to, to lose someone you admire and love and respect so much at such a young age. And, and what I like about you again is you could have taken your life down the bottom of a beer bottle mm. and been angry and been bitter about what happened and how tough life was. But I never had that impression from you. So where did you get that support from through those really difficult early years transitioning to being a young adult? Yeah, I just had a, a friend of the family uh, who was sort of my coach as well for a, quite a period of time when I was younger, a guy called Alan Perkins who sort of took me under his wing when my father passed away and I, I moved in with him at the time. Uh, and, and to be fair, for the first six months, I more or less just curled into a ball and didn't want to play snooker. It was the last thing on my mind and obviously was not in a good place, obviously to the point of nearly ending my own life as well. So that was tough. But uh, obviously having him there for me obviously pulled me through that. Sort of tried to turn it around and say, look, if your father was here, he, he wouldn't want you to, to be going through this. He'd want you to still be smiling, still be playing snooker, trying your best. So try and use him as a positive as such and try and kick on and do it for him. So at the start, it was difficult to try and look at it like that. But the time as time's gone on, that's what I've chose to do. And I still do that to today. So, so you got to a point whilst you were living with Alan early on where you, you were contemplating not wanting to be around. It was that bad. Yeah, not so much to the point when I was living with him, but before, because I didn't move in with him straight away. We still had the council house, which we had, which was my, me, my father and my brother who was living in for probably about three or four months uh, until we eventually decided to give it back to the council because we couldn't just bring ourselves to keep walking into that house knowing that my father wasn't going to be there. So it was only about four months after that that I moved in with Alan and his family. But uh, yeah, them, them four months in between was, was really tough and I... Yeah, at times, obviously, I was very, very close to doing it, but I sort of told myself, look, obviously, my father wouldn't want that, and obviously, all the people I'm leaving behind as well, friends and family. And, and therefore, I guess, seeing what a lovely life your hard work has created with great help from Vicky and, and for Sophia, you must be really proud of the fact that if there was a context in which your dad could look down on how mm. things have gone, you've provided a lovely life for your own family whilst sticking to the principles that he gave you before he died? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, that's obviously one thing you can't turn back the clock on, but if, if I could, obviously I'd give everything what I've achieved in snooker and all the money I've earned, obviously, to have him back and see everything what I've got at the moment with Vicky, a great wife, obviously Sophia, a fantastic daughter. Uh, and even for him to see my career as a professional, he never seen me play once as a professional or only as amateur level. So. It's obviously a shame and that like eats away at me day after day, obviously knowing he's not been able to see that. But 
hopefully looking down and, and seeing what I've achieved and obviously made him proud. I'm sure you have. And you mentioned Vicky there. I don't think it's a coincidence. When you look at, say, the longevity of Mark Williams with Joe beside him mm. and John Higgins with Denise, two great players with big personalities, but very strong-willed wives as well. And I, I'm not sure you would have done everything you've achieved had you not had Vicky beside you. See, she's a really fantastic woman, isn't she? Yeah, most definitely. And I think the biggest thing as well is that because she's played Q Sports herself, she sort of understands the hard work you have to put into what you get out of the game. So sometimes when I've been sat at home and I'm thinking, oh, I don't really feel like going to practice today, I'm not going to go to the club. Or in times, what we're going for at the moment, we're having a table at home, I think, oh, I don't really feel like practicing today. She's the one who gives me the kick up the backside and says to me, no, you need to get back on that practice table. You're playing well at the moment. You don't want to play out that good patch. So off you go, you get back on there and I'll look after Sophia and do the homeschooling. So yeah, I mean, she's been a big part of my success. Make no mistake about that. And I think this is an inspirational story and I get annoyed on your behalf when people drone on about occasionally you grinding frames out. I think the way you've lived your life and the manner in which you conduct yourself is a great example to people who might be struggling in their own lives, none more so than what's going on at the moment. What would you say to people who, for whatever reason, are in a really dark place at the moment? Because you've been there, you've just told us, yeah. and you've come out the other side. What, what would you say to people to try and give them that motivation to not give up and to just keep going? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, and obviously I, I won't be the, 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 the only person to go through it and I won't be the last, uh, and it is difficult. But if, if you are going through that, you need to obviously speak out. Don't just curl yourself up in a ball, which I was doing and making myself worse. You need to speak out and speak to the people close to you and obviously make them obviously realise what you're going through so they can be there and give you their full attention. And also speak to the professional people as well to get help. So, uh, as you say, me playing on the table, I think the reason why I play like I do is because... I've sort of grew up, had nothing, my father had nothing, I've had to sort of work for everything I've got, so being on the table and just playing and, and making it easy for opponents, I think that's the last thing I'm going to do. I try and work for every point I get, and I work for everything that I do on and off the table. You deserve every success you've achieved and more to come. You're an absolute class act, Mark. Great to see you back to your best. Cheers, Rob. Thanks, mate.